What is up, heroes? This is Minute Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we finished up a timeline. I, I actually forget which one it was. Um, I'd imagine it was somewhere in this vicinity. However, it's worth noting that it's actually been quite a bit since I recorded last. Uh, I took a little bit of a break in terms of YouTube, so it's been a week since uploads, but I'd actually recorded a couple weeks worth of episodes. Um, so it's been nearly a month since I last played the game. And that's just because I was anticipating work getting exceptionally busy and not having the time to record. So I appreciate your understanding. And then the other thing is, I felt like I had been having to push myself a little bit to play the game and wasn't enjoying it as much as I had initially. And I'm hoping that having taken a break, things will be fresher uh, now that I'm coming back to it. And we'll see where we can go um, from there. But anyways, I think we I think what makes sense is to go back to this branching point here and then to see what happens here. We initially took the blue door. However, this time around, we are going to choose a different option. Let's see what that is. Also, please forgive me if I forget things from different timelines. Um, I am really eager to see how this story unfolds and I like the characters. Uh, but keeping track of everything over the course of the entirety of this playthrough has been quite a struggle. And I appreciate the gentle reminders in the comments, too. But, anyways, Clover and I were a pair. That meant that I had to choose one of the three solos. So we've already chosen to go through the green door with Quark. Interesting. And that option led us to going through the blue door, right? Because that's our option here. We ended up going through the blue door. So I guess we'll choose to go through the red door with Dio. Dio, the, the character, surprisingly, we actually know the most about now. I'll take Dio. That means the red door for us. Whoa, betting on the door car... the, the door cars. <laughs> it's been a minute, guys. Betting on the dark horse, huh? Feels kind of weird to say that about myself. Anyway, might as well be polite. Thank you. Are you okay with that, Clover? Well, I don't really trust him, but... If Alice really wants to go with option B... Yes, this works fine. K, Temyoji, and I will take the green door. So that's going to be that trio. K, Temyoji, and Alice. It's not great, but it's better than Dio. <laughs> Lo love the shade. I'm good. Hmm. I'm willing to do option B. Quark should be fine if he's with Luna. Okay. Yeah, I guess actually that makes a lot of sense, given her medical expertise. So I'm not sure that's been established in this timeline yet, but anyways, okay. I'll take good care of him, I promise. What about Phi and K? No problems here. I'll take Quark and Luna and we'll do the blue door. I also approve of option B. I will take the green door, correct? Yeah, good. Looks like we're all set. Yeah, it actually worked out surprisingly well, once somebody's willing to stomach the bullet of taking uh, Dio along with them. K nodded and handed Quark gently to Luna. Only got 10 seconds left. Come on guys, hurry! The door's already closing! Coming! I know, I know! With seconds to spare, we leapt across the threshold. And with that, the colored doors close. So we're through the red door. I believe this one had the pantry in the past? I don't remember 100%. What is this? There are three different doors. Which one do we take? Don't know, but it looks like they're all locked anyway. So this is a dead end? Great. No, hold on. What's this thing? Well, it's got a lever on it. Don't get too attached, it's probably a lever! 
<laughs> I can appreciate that one, Clover. I, I like that a lot. Are you serious? Yeah, pretty good, huh? Am I great or what? Huh? I I'll give you a Clover. Come on, that was that was a great one. I appreciated that. Hey, Sigma, is this too simple or something? I wouldn't rule it out. Let's just take it easy with her, okay? Hey! What kind of a gentleman has a secret conversation in front of a lady? I guess it can't be helped though. You boys just secrete secrets. <laughs> That's that one's a, that was a bit rougher, Clover. I don't know if I could really applaud that one. First one I liked a lot, but <laughs> oh man, I'm good. Sigma, please let me give her a smack. No, Dio, bad. I wouldn't do that. What if it only makes her worse? Well, I think that's enough genius comedy for now. How about we throw that lever? I thought you said we should stay away from it. Well, you don't really think anything bad's gonna happen if you pull it, do you? Besides, it's not like we can go back. Fine. I'll do it. Ready? Here we go. Sounds so just like dead inside as, as they open the lever. Alright, so let's see where we are off to. Huh. The center one opened. Looks like the others are still locked though. Hmm. Through the center one then. Forward. Without waiting for a response, Clover marched through the door. You and I shared a glance, shook our heads, and followed. The laboratory. Oh, so this is this is where we found that other dose of um, not remdesivir. What what else is it? I don't remember. Excelivir? Is that it? <laughs> it looks cool, but the second dose of whatever we can use to cure the the radical six virus. What is this place? Well, it said laboratory on the door, didn't it? I figure that means they're dissecting frogs or building mind rays or something. <laughs> a laboratory, huh? Hopefully the puzzles are cool then. Do you think they might research stuff like viruses here? If they do... Good idea! We might be able to find some of that Excelivir. That's what it is. If we do, we can cure Quark. Hmm. You really think it'll be that easy? Well, somebody's a positive thinker. Shut it. Just saying, this place hasn't exactly been set up for us to succeed so far. Well, we won't know until we look. So let's get started. Alright, let's get to it, guys. Got ourselves a puzzle to, to solve. Got a room to escape. Alright, so it has been a minute. And, oh man, I think there's a little bit of a screen tearing here. So I think I need to readjust the settings because it's been a minute. I'll be back in one second. Alright, we should be back in action. So, let's start. There's a whole lot to explore here, honestly. Where do we want to start? Let's um let, let's start at this area over here. If it's another pipe puzzle, that sounds pretty cool to me. Man, look at all these pipes. I think they run down to the beakers underneath. There are handles where the pipes meet. If you turn the handle right, the liquid goes right. <clears throat> and if you turn it left, the liquid goes left. So maybe if you put it in the middle, half goes to the left and half goes to the right. What is this liquid then? Um, probably water. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one, Clover. What do the numbers mean? Are they supposed to indicate the amount of water that flows out of each pipe? There aren't any units, but it looks like 80-somethings of water come out of the center pipe. <clears throat> and then each pipe after, the split gets 40. 
So we're supposed to regulate the flow of water with the handles so that each beaker gets the correct amount. Yeah. How do we get the water to come out in the first place, though? Now, I think you probably just pull that lever over there on the right. Like this. After turning the correct levers, pull down on the lever on the right to pour water into the beakers. Okay, let's give it a shot. <clears throat> so, the first question is, what do the numbers on the bottom mean? 3, 3, 2, 5, 3, right? Um, given that, let's see here. Oh, actually, no, it's just uh, like a fraction or like a proportion, like a, yeah, a proportion. Um, there are 160 total units of water to give and the proportions are given at the bottom. So we can think about it in terms of like 30, 30, 20, 50, and 30. So how do we want to do this? Well, if we need to get 30 over on the left, we're going to probably need to split the 80 down into a 10 and the 40 down to a 20, or we can split the 40 down to a 10 and just end up with 20 from the 80. I think that seems more reasonable. So if that's what's gonna happen, Oh, but interesting, we actually can't do that on the left. See, if I bring this towards the middle, it'll split to 20, and that 20 will come on the left, in addition to, well, going 20 going to the right. So if we wanted to split this 20 on the right into 10, in order to do that, we have to have an extra 20 from the left. Which actually, now that I think about it, works perfectly, right? That's gonna make 30 on the left-hand side. So, even though it didn't go intention or like according to plan intentionally, it worked out in the end. And so now, with this in place, granted, this isn't the only way to make 30 on the left-hand side, we should keep in mind. Actually, no it is, because the only, I guess, source of water that has access to the red beaker is the leftmost one. So we can't rely on anything from the middle 80 units to fill up that one on the left. So these two handles on the far left are locked in position, which means we have for the yellow beaker, 10 coming from the left, and we need 20 coming from the right, which means this one has to be divided in the middle, and similarly, this one has to be divided in the middle as well. That works out for the green too, and then for the 40, we need to split this as well, like so, and we should be good. Nice. We've poured the water into the beakers, and all the lights are green. You did it! Don't know what I did, but but we did it, whatever it is. There's a rectangular hole in the wall. Okay, all the lights are green. Do I pick up the, the beakers? I'm still not sure what any of this is, but it looks like I've got all these liquids diluted correctly. So what do we do now? I think we need more information. Yeah, no, I agree. But it was fun solving that puzzle. Okay, where to from here? So I guess this is the, uh, the edge of the exploration area, so. Can we go over here? We can. All right, what are we gonna find here? A binder. Anything in it? There's some paper inside it. It says, DNA extraction instructions. You found DNA extraction instructions. Okay. I wish they would just show me rather than have me go to the archive. Proceed through the following steps to extract DNA from a plant's roots and seeds. Place plant material in designated blender and activate blender. Once the material has been thoroughly broken down, add in solution of saline water. The liquid will be filtered and dripped down into a beaker. Once it is done so, pour the ethanol into the beaker. DNA will collect at the bottom of the beaker. Use an empty capsule to collect it. Okay. So we got ourselves... This is probably like the blender and beaker dealio. That thing on the top looks like some sort of industrial strength lid. If you open it up, it looks like a blender or something. I don't think you'd use it for cooking, though. Maybe it's for scientific experimentation? We are in a lab. Hmm... Yeah, you could probably pulverize just about anything with something this heavy duty. Better than the, what was it, like the mortar and pestle? Or <laughs> I think that's what it was called. I dealt with in my chemistry lab. So we got some seeds here. Lovely. A cylinder full of seeds. They're thin and have stripes. We're presumably going to find a few different types. Probably five if I had to guess. Let's see if we can put this in the blender. Hey, are you planning on putting those seeds in there? I think maybe you ought to hold on a second. There's some other seeds over here. Don't you think we should check them out first? <laughs> Sounds like a plan, Dio. What is this? So we've got this type of seed. Okay. Cylinder full of seeds! They're round. One half is colored and the other isn't. Okay. We have the safe over here. Lovely. And then we have a microscope. Is this a microscope? I tried looking into the eyepiece, but it's pitch black in there. 
Well, there are these four holes on top of it. Maybe we need to stick something in them. I mean, is it on? Are there a light source or something? Hmm. So the four circular things in the top, we'll have to keep that in mind as we continue to work our way around. What do we have here? Some more seeds. Oh, but I guess we're taking this empty capsule. This looks like one of the things we can insert in the microscope, but we'll see. It looks like a ball. There isn't anything in it. Do you think we're supposed to stick this metal part into something? I do. I do. I think it's actually the, the microscope. Oh, so there's a second one. And we get this seed. Okay. A tray. Nothing on it anymore. A binder. <clears throat> More instructions. Yay. There's some paper inside. Let me see that. Let's me see that. Love it. Hmm. So steps for dissecting a frog. Okay. And then what do we have over here? A binder. Looks like there's two pieces of paper in here. Yeah. Let's see here. Hydroponics Research 1 and 2. Okay. More reading. Yay. Steps for dissecting a frog. Research has shown that there is a distinct and repeatable relationship between the fluid used and the type of seed. These relationships can be characterized in the following manner. The long seeds failed to germinate in three of the fluids. Round seeds in fluid B, yellow, and fluid D, cyan, failed to germinate. Oh, so we're basically going to have to put the five different, yeah, so five different seeds and five different beakers, and this is going to tell us which one goes in which, essentially. None of the marked seeds germinated if put in fluid C. Non-marked seeds failed to germinate in fluid A. All right, I mean, we'll, we'll deal with this when we get closer. Um, that's hydroponics research. I accidentally clicked on that. I was like, what? Preparation of hydroponic fluid in seeds. Preparation one, prepare the five different hydroponic fluids. Dilute with ratio, one part fluid, ten parts water. Each fluid has a distinct color. Okay, preparation two, prepare the five types of plant seeds. Two long seeds and three round seeds. Dissecting a frog, remove the specimen from its preserving ethanol. I think this is telling us essentially where we're going to get the ethanol, right? Dispose of the ethanol by pouring it down the drain in the fume cupboard. The ethanol will be filtered and gathered in the liquid waste tank beneath the cupboard. Begin dissection using provided scalpel. Be sure to conduct your dissection inside the fume cover. So yeah, that's telling us essentially where we're going to find the, the ethanol. Although, let's look at this real quick. What's this thing? Who knows? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Not important, I guess. <clears throat> I guess we'll continue working our way around. <clears throat> what do we have over here? A lion eating the sun. Lovely, lovely. You have a scalpel. Okay. Pretty fancy tray. Is that a cat playing with a ball of yarn? Are you even looking? Are you even looking, cat it? <laughs> it's a lion. How are you not getting that? Uh, what? Sorry. It's a sort of tick I picked up when I was a kid. Whenever I talk about cats, I kind of... Well, you heard. That's pretty weird. Okay. <clears throat> and the cupboard below is where we should find it, right? Looks like it's maybe in this one over here. So this is our fourth type of seed that we've found? Yes, and then over here, <clears throat> this is the drain where the ethanol goes. Huh? Why'd they put a speaker here? That's a drain! What is wrong with you? <clears throat> this must be some kind of waste tank. It looks like a thigh tank. A thigh tank? Are you for real? <laughs> Channeling his inner Yuji. For real? What are we going to find over here? Can I go to this? I can. Lovely. So there's the fifth type of seed. We clearly have the red ones, I, <clears throat> or the round ones. I think the marked ones are the ones with the, uh, with like the, the dark brown portions to them. So like that one, that one, and that one. Or they have some sort of pattern, right? A cylinder full of seeds. They're round and striped. Okay. I'd, I'd imagine that means they're marked. Some beakers. Looks like they're empty. We probably won't need them then. All right, these look like something you might put specimens in, maybe, but there's nothing in them right now. What about this one up top? Saline solution, lovely. Good to know, and then behind it is a frog. <laughs> I love the model for the frog. Look, it's Lord Hoppington. Don't give it a name. Aw, uh, it looks like he's dead. Yeah, he's probably been preserved. I think the liquid inside is ethanol. How do you know? The smell, really? Yeah, it smells like disinfectant, right? And besides, scientists preserve stuff in ethanol all the time. Okay. So now we can, um, actually, 
Can we not look at this thing here? I'm so curious about that. What happens if we keep going like this? Yeah, we can't access that thing on the other side of the table. Weird, but not the end of the world by any means. Um, okay. I'll just pour the froggy ethanol into the drain. And set the frog over here. And, well, I guess for the time being we can cut open the frog for the sake of seeing what's inside his belly. Um, Sigma, what are you going to do with the scalpel? Are you going to cut Lord Hoppington open? Yes, I am. Trust me, I'm a surgeon. <laughs> well, I don't really have a choice, do I? But poor Lord Hoppington. What are you freaking out about? It's dead. That's not the point. It's still sad. <laughs> the, look, the look on Clover's face as she says that. It's still sad. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of sad. Oh, for the love of... This frog is dead. It is an ex-frog. Oh, fine. I'll do it. Hey, well, I guess that saves me the trouble. Letting Dio do it. I mean, <laughs> we all know he's the most skilled with the knife here. Huh? Something came out of his stomach. A blue capsule? Nice. What a, what a way to get one of these. So that is three of them we've found. Presumably we need four. Anything else in here? Snip. Lord Hoppington. Why? You left us too soon. <laughs> Shut up. That's really funny, actually. This tank collects liquid waste. The ethanol I poured down the drain should be in here. It's a little big, but I have a feeling we should take it. Okay, so we have the liquid waste tank. Lovely. Now, the only thing I don't think we have that we need is the fourth bulb or whatever. Yeah, I think these holes would be a good fit. Doesn't look like the size and shape are just right. Let's see if we can start placing them. We can. Lovely. So let's do that just for the sake of clearing out our inventory for the moment. A microscope, apparently. It has circular holes in the top that fit the capsules we found. Interesting. So these ones we can't actually put, meaning we probably need to color them with something, at least I think, before we can do that. So... I think we place the, the liquid tank over here. There's a rectangular hole in the wall. Oh, is that not where I placed the tank? Oh, I, uh, I guess not. Now that I have more info, can I take these? Hey, you remember that hydroponics thing you found? Did it say something about preparing five types of seeds? You've got them all, right? Yeah, I have two types of long seeds and three types of round seeds. Then maybe you should put them in the beakers. If you just grab one of those seed containers, you should be able to put them into one of the beakers. All right. So, okay, now it's time to figure this out. So let's take a look at Hydroponics Research 1. Uh, prepare the five different hydroponic fluids. Dilute with ratio one part fluid, ten parts water. Each fluid has a distinct color. So that part's already done. Prepare the five types of plant seeds. We've already got that. The long seeds failed to germinate in three of the fluids, but we don't know which of them. The round seeds in fluid B and fluid D failed to germinate. So... I wish I could write this down. I have the memo, I guess. So round is... Let's see here. We're going to go with fluid A, B, C, D, and E. And we're going to sort of rule out different seeds as we can. We have five different types of seeds, right? Um, I don't remember all of them, but the round seeds in fluid B and fluid D failed to germinate. So... Which, which seeds do we have again? Gotta go back and check. So we have round, we have round striped, round unmarked, long, round marked, long marked. Okay. So there are three round and two long. So let's get back to this. So, round seeds in fluid B and fluid D failed to germinate. So, between B and D, it's one of the two long ones. So, we'll say long marked, long unmarked. I guess this, this is just very impromptu annotation. So, bear, bear with me. And then the third clue is none of the marked seeds germinated if put in fluid C. So, for C, we have long unmarked, and we have round unmarked. What about the fourth clue? Non-marked seeds failed to germinate in fluid A or fluid B. So, nothing marked 
or no, non-marked seeds failed. So all of the unmarked ones failed in A and B. So in A, we need to have long marked, or we can have round, I don't know, striped, and we'll say right, or round marked, being the one that's kind of like split half and half. And then in B, we can say, we, it's not this one. So in B, we have the long marked one, which means in D, we have the long unmarked one. And I think that means in C, we have the, the round unmarked one, right? Round unmarked. Which one have we used already? Oh, so we used um, long marked in uh, B, so that can't be one of the options in A. So between A and E, it's really just round striped or round marked, right? Now let's look at the last clue. When the striped seeds were put into fluid D and fluid E, only one of them failed to germinate. When the striped seeds were put into fluid D and fluid E. Oh, that's the long marked one, right? So long marked and round striped. Between the two of them, one of them failed to germinate in E. So one of them worked in E, essentially, is the, is the point. But we already know long marked is in B. So we know that round striped must be in E. Because again, long marked would be in B. Cool. So then round marked is in the half half should be in A. Cool, I think we got it figured out guys. So let's take a look here. This is long striped. Where do we put long striped? That is long marked that goes in B. The beakers contain a liquid culture. Each seed requires a particular kind of culture. Place each seed in the appropriate beaker. By dragging a seed on top of another seed, you can switch them. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on, but here goes. Oh, this is this is pretty neat. So long stripe goes in B. Okay. And then round marked. This one goes in A. C has round unmarked. D has long unmarked, and that leaves round striped and E. Cool, let's check it. Nice. Good work, team. Those logic puzzles are fun. You did it, Sigma. You've sown your seeds. Clover, please. Clover. Clover. Don't say that. Huh? Why not? Just don't. There's no way. We, we know from that other ending she's not this innocent. Quiet, you two. Look at this. Oh, a red capsule. You're gonna take the red pill or the blue pill. <laughs> All right, so that's the point of that. We obviously have our fourth capsule now. There's a red capsule sitting in the hole, which we have successfully obtained. Lovely. So what we can do in the meantime is place that here, but we still have these two unused capsules, right? And I'm fairly confident we need to do something over here with them. So what can we do? We can use this liquid waste tank, I think. I remember seeing something in there that said DNA extraction structures. I think there was a part about using the mixer for something. Oh, I thought we tried to blend stuff earlier. Oh, wait, no, that's right. It wouldn't let us use it, right? So let's, um... All right, well, I guess we'll check the instructions just to be safe. So DNA extraction. Place plant material in designated blender and activate blender once the material has been thoroughly broken down add in the saline then ethanol okay cool and then the dna will probably have a specific color so we'll probably do this twice maybe probably one for the round one for the long let's see are you going to use those seeds in the mixer yeah you think i shouldn't no i just mean don't you think you should put all of them in you mean all five different types of seeds yeah hmm interesting why not Okay, I guess. <laughs> I guess that works, guys. <laughs> so we'll put those in the mixer and see what happens. Alright, done. Okay, so next up is the saline. And we have exhausted all of the, the nuts. <laughs> Alright, I'll just pour the saline solution in here. Just using up all of our inventory now. There's a funnel above the beaker. Filtered liquid comes out of it eventually okay looking good 
And now we use the ethanol. Alright, next I need to pour the ethanol into the beaker. Got some good old chemistry class going on here. I will say I never really enjoyed my chemistry labs. I, in theory, liked learning about chemistry, but just sitting in the lab for three, four hours running through experiments, it, it just did not click with me. <laughs> then... Hmm, I guess this should do it. Okay, so we have the, the extractable DNA. Let's see if we can put it in the capsule. Alright, I'm gonna dip the protrusion on this capsule into the stuff into the beaker, on the stuff in the beaker. Awesome, you got it all. So now we have the yellow capsule, lovely. Now the next question is what about this last one, the empty capsule? I need some sort of pigmentation for it. So we use this thing to get DNA, right? I wonder if we could use it on anything else. Well, we will if we have to, I guess. That's so vague. <laughs> Why is every relationship always about what the guy wants, huh? Wait, what? How did that... I've got needs too, you know? I mean, I'm the kind of girl who's totally devoted to her man, but that's a two-way street. <laughs> what the heck are you talking about? Sigma's was just like, Clover, please. I need a minute. I just need a little bit of stability in this room. Okay. So what else can we use it on, right? Um, at the moment, we don't have any more nuts or seeds to use. We could potentially use it on, like, the frog, I guess. In the meantime, we can... I don't think we can place the empty capsule, right? No, we can't. So we're gonna need... That's gonna be our next little puzzle. We'll place the yellow one in the meantime. Look! The screen changed. What's going on? You put in the yellow capsule, right? I think it reacted to that. Why? Dunno. But I was just thinking. Thinking what? Well, that thing we just put in had plant DNA in it, right? Maybe that caused this. Hmm. Anyway, let's go have a look. I get the impression we need to put, like, the frog in it or something, which is really morbid, but might be the answer. This is... This is the safe password. Perfect. This is just what we need. So, moon, moon, moon. Yeah, now we can get in the safe. We found a safe password. Okay, I don't remember... Let's see, which password is which? Okay, so this is actually the hidden file password. I think before we do anything else... Um, let's, let's do that real quick. This is a safe, right? Yeah, it's just like the one in the AV room. I saw one in the infirmary, too. If we punch in the right password, it'll open up. At least it should. That's odd, though, because I feel like the steps we took this time around were very, just intuitive. Like, very much a trail set up by the game itself. So I, I'm shocked that this is the hidden file password and not the escape password. So this time around, the escape password is going to be the very obtuse one. Yes, it opened. You did it. Okay. So we got the gold file, which I still haven't taken a look at, but I'm very excited to do so once we uh, make a little more progress. Let's see here. So let's head all the way back over here, see if we can pick up our frog friend. Frog, it's been cut open. I feel kind of bad for it. Can we... Can we just use the part of it in the empty capsule now? No, we can't. Okay. So not that. What about, is there something in the drain maybe? Or we've already taken out the waste. Is there anything in this area? There's still just this tray, which we haven't been able to really do much with. What about over this way? Anything in this like green tank? Feels very like horror lab, you know? Can I really not interact? That's so odd. Strange machine, we don't know what it does. So it's probably best to leave it alone for now, okay. There's the tray, which doesn't really have anything on it at the moment. We could just put saline in it, couldn't we? Darn. I guess we can't. Alright, ethanol it is. Nope. Okay. Well, I guess for the sake of completeness. <laughs> Alright, we can't combine the ethanol and saline. Yeah, I really want to interact with this other machine up there, but it's not letting me. There's a steel plate bolted across the store. I can't open it. Anything else on... Oh, maybe in the bottom right. Roots. Okay. That one was a little bit more subtle. What the heck is this? A dead spider? Maybe it's a fake beard. <laughs> Have you ever seen a person with a beard like this? Yeah, my grandpa had one. Yeah, it looks like a root. It's probably some kind of preserved specimen. Okay, so that's what's going to give us our final color. So, ultimately, not... Really not that crazy of a of a solution, right? Okay, time to throw this root in the mixer. A lot of times I find myself just being like, okay, what are the last things I can interact with? What items do I have? How can I possibly like reinterpret this? 
sometimes it's like a guessing game of what does the game want me to think about or you know that sort of thing but this I feel like is a lot more straightforward all right done which is honestly uh, appreciated <laughs> all right I'll just pour the sailing solution in here granted this doesn't feel like an additional puzzle on top of you know the original so it feels like I'm just kind of doing the same puzzle twice more or less like the the trick to this was finding the root which inherently is not like something that requires a lot of skill it just requires looking in the right place but it's all good all right next I need to pour the ethanol into the beaker I'm glad it didn't take a lot of time this room in fact did not take a lot of time it's pretty odd, actually. I expected, I was like, oh man, it's gonna be a puzzle room. <laughs> it's gonna be a long episode, but no, we're, we're cruising along, and I actually need to get to sleep at a decent time. I was worried, but we're gonna, we're gonna be right on time. Hmm, I guess this should do it. Okay. All right, I'm gonna dip the protrusion on this capsule into the stuff in the beaker, and we get a nice green capsule. Awesome, you got it all. Okay. Sigma, come here. What's wrong? I can see something in here. What do you mean, something? Just look. It's easier than explaining. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's why it's an actual puzzle <laughs> and not just finding another thing. I spoke too soon. I'm sorry, Zero Escape. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, what the heck is this? It looks like it's DNA. Probably a simplified version of a DNA sequence. A is adenine, G is guanine, C is cytosine, and T is thymine. I think we can manipulate it. Yeah, it looks like the puzzle has to do with pairing these bases. Bases? Yeah, DNA is made out of four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. However, you can only bind A and T, or G and C, ideally. <laughs> Anything else just won't work. These are called complementary base pairings. You sure know a lot about this stuff. Eh, I guess so. Anyway, you should be able to solve the puzzle now. I feel like this is covered in most basic biology classes. Give it a shot. Okay, re reposition each row so that each A is connected to a T and each G is connected to a C. Move each row sideways until the letters match up. Oh, can I move the top? I can move the top and the bottom, but they're... Oh, interesting. So they're paired in a, particu in a particular way. That's pretty interesting. So how do we want to do this? This doesn't quite work. It's pretty darn close, actually. All things considered. Um, hmm. What's a good way to approach this? I could try different alignments up top and then see what happens when I try to get them to align elsewhere. I guess I could consider how many combinations actually work here. For example, if I rotate, if I move this two units to the right, it'll work. No, it won't. So if I move this two units to the left, it won't work. If I put it right here, it'll line up nicely. Are there any other combinations that work well, though? Or is this just the same? No, that won't work. Okay, so we'll leave it at this for now, but I think that's actually where we had it before, right? And this bottom row, as it is, is not gonna work. So what we need to do is essentially see where do we have multiple options to work with, right? So in this position, things work well and if I rotate it or if I you know slide it three units to the right what happens it's still not going to work unfortunately so is there any other combination up here that works no so it's not a matter of which com having multiple combinations and testing which one works it's about how do you position each row such that you're sliding things to the left and the right? Uh, okay, and in the other, I guess, DNA sequences, there's like top sequence, middle sequence, and bottom sequence. And you need to have everything line up. There's only one way for each of them to pair up, uh, but, but you need to, move, I guess, like consider that in top sequence, for example, there are six different positions that you can have these two rows in that'll make it work. 
um, but only one of them is going to be the solution. So if it wasn't this one, we can try doing something like this, where we move both of them to the right like that, and things should work out fairly nicely. Let's see, when I move this, it moves that bottom row to the left, right? And when I move this this way, it moves that top row to the left. Huh. So, so the question then is, how do I pair the top and the bottom, right? Hmm. So if I were to, for example, try to find the, the correct pairing for the bottom, it'll completely mess up the middle row. So how do I align those? How do I, I guess, what moves do I need to make in the middle for things to align nicely? I need to make some pretty serious moves. I need to move to the left four, right? So if I need to move the middle row to the left four, like the bottom part of the, the middle sequence, bottom row, middle sequence, left four, how do I do that? I move the bottom row of bottom sequence like two to the left because that'll move it two to the left, right? Oh, interesting. This one moves independently. So this is the last one. We don't need to worry about this one at all for now. So if I move this one two more to the left actually. I was like this. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's one of the keys, is that I can worry about that top row of the bottom sequence last, because it doesn't impact any of the other ones. I probably was overthinking it, honestly, but that was pretty cool. Ha! Did it! Good job, Sigma! That was awesome! You want a treat? I'm not hungry. You're turkey! <laughs> I get it. <laughs> what in the heck? <laughs> like the country. Stop screwing off. We don't have time for that. Now get over here and look at this. Huh. There's something on it. So it's interesting that you get the hidden file password on the way to the escape password, but... Huh. It's different now. The shapes are in different places. Oh, I, was it moon, moon, star, I think? Let's see here. So it was like, moon, moon, and then star. Sweet. Overall, laboratory gets, gets a thumbs up from me. Ha! It opened. Awesome, the suspense was killing me. Okay, what have we got here? This first is... I see Excelivir. <laughs> a map? It says floor B. I will say, this, this map conversation, every single time we finish this, like degree or like the first is the first or the second chromatic door kills me <laughs> it kills me the one i found in the infirmary said floor a so did the one from the lounge then that would make floor a the top floor right i mean we rode the elevator down to get here yeah i guess so okay all right let's keep looking there's a lot of stuff in here these are okay of course the key cards each one's got a picture of a moon on it, then these have to be the cards the announcer was talking about. Looks like they gave us two, just like with the sun cards. I'm a solo, so I'll hang on to one. Cool? Sure, fine. Next up, we've got a notebook. Hmm. Anything interesting? I can't read any of this. Are these even letters? What the heck is this? Isn't it a journal? It's got dates and stuff. Maybe, but I can't read any of this. What what language is it? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's Brazilian? They speak Portuguese in Brazil. <laughs> anyway, what else have we got here? Interesting, a notebook in a different language. I'm trying to think how that would be relevant. Have we learned much about different languages earlier in the game? I don't remember. Is somebody particularly good with languages? I, nothing's ringing a bell. But I obviously can't... I can easily attribute that to just not having played the game in a while. Anyways, looks like two more things. Notably, is that medicine? Hmm. What's it say on the label? Uh, 
A X E L A V I R. Axelavir? Axelever? Wait, didn't Luna say something about um, Axelavir? You're right. This is it. This is Axelavir. It's the cure for Radical Six. Ooh, this timeline should actually be pretty interesting because of the dynamics that having one, potentially two doses of Axelavir is gonna, you know, bring. Whoa, hold on. Let me see that. Later, we need to get out of here as quick as possible. And I'm curious, I wonder if this will unlock that timeline, right? Where we find out exactly where we can get the Excelivir in that Sigma in that timeline, uh, like the main, main timeline, where we need both doses to heal both Quark and Alice uh, is going to enable us to get it. But later, we need to get out of here as quick as possible. Yeah, we need to get this stuff to Quark. First, we've got to get out of this room. Yeah, but that's easy. You've, you've got it, right? Yes, we found the key. Yeah, let's go. Off we go. The door, I believe, is it on this side? It is. Lovely. The lock for the door. Right now it says lock. You guys ready? Yeah, let's do it. Just get it over with. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. And we have opened the door and escaped the room. Give yourself a pat on the back. We've done it. We found it. And... Hey. Hold on a minute. Of course. Dio's gonna be like, you know, now that you've found that Accelivere, I'd like to just, you know, just stab you, steal it for myself in case I get infected. <laughs> of course, nothing's gonna go smoothly now that we have the Accelivere. But um, we gotta hurry and get this to Quark, right? And unsurprisingly, having talked about my bedtime, we're, of course, gonna find out whatever happens now that we have the Accelivere in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, it was a pretty quick puzzle room, in my opinion. I think it went very well. I liked the DNA puzzle at the end. I really liked the pipe puzzles. And, yeah, the environment was neat. Music's good. Yeah, pace was pace was fine. The, I guess, like, the two different passwords weren't so obtuse that I was just sitting here thinking for, you know, minutes on end before looking it up. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm really curious to see how the dynamic of the group changes once we cure Quark, or if we have to decide between curing Alice and or Quark, um, that would be oof, that would be an interesting branch. But anyways, until the next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.